Today, uh, hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Akhil Shah, uh, professor, Index Media College and Research Center uh, in North. Let's talk something about eczema. Let's see what contents are there in today's lecture. This is definition, classification of uh, eczema, irritant contact dermatitis, allergy contact dermatitis. Match testing, photodermatitis, polymorphous light interruptions, hand eczema, atopic dermatitis, petrosis alba, seborrheic dermatitis, acidotic eczema, mule eczema, stasis dermatitis, then uh, lichen uh, simplex chronicus, dragon nodularis, disseminated eczema, how to manage, some multiple choice questions, and photographs. Let's start. What is eczema? Okay, eczema is a dermatosis or is eczema a dermatitis? Okay, what is dermatosis? Is the condition of the skin? What is the dermatitis? Inflammation of the skin. So, eczema is both dermatosis and a dermatitis. A eczema is a dermatosis in which there is dermatitis. Okay. So eczema in Greek means boil, to boil over, boiling or boiling over. Okay. How do we define eczema? Eczema is a type of dermatitis which is characterized by erythema, edema, papillo vesicles, which are oozing in the acute stage, resting and scaling in the subacute stage, and lichenification in the chronic stages, which is histologically characterized by spongiosis. Now, all the eczemas are dermatitis, but all dermatitis is not eczema. So, understood? Inflammation of the skin is dermatitis. So, there's inflammation of skin in all the cases of eczema, but eczema is not the only thing which causes dermatitis. Okay. How do you classify eczema? There are many types of eczema. There are two major types of eczema. Exogenous eczema and endogenous eczema. Exogenous eczema is wherein an external or exogenous cause for the eczema is identifiable. And in endogenous eczema, an internal cause or an inherent property of the skin causes eczema. So it comes from within. There is no external cause. There is an internal or endogenous cause for that eczema. Right. Now, some eczema can be precipitated by both internal and external factors. So there is a predisposition on internal propensity and which is complicated by some external factor. For example, in xerotic eczema, the propensity of skin dryness is there already and drying and winter season or some drugs can are external factors. So it's interplay between two types, uh, two factors, internal and inter external. So that is an, a mixed, mixed type of eczema. Now, how do you classify these two types of eczemas? Exogenous eczemas can be classified into irritant dermatitis, irritant contact dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, and photo dermatitis. Endogenous eczemas, most prominent of them is atopic dermatitis, Petriasis alba, seborrheic dermatitis, discoid eczema, hand eczema, esteototic eczema, gravitational eczema, lichen simplex chronicus, and nodular rigo or rigo nodularis. What are the, what is the classification based on the clinical stages? 
Now there could be three stages in eczema. The acute eczema, subacute eczema, and chronic eczema. There are various skin changes in all these different stages. What is an acute eczema? Acute means the development is fast, immediate or in a day or in an hours. Okay. So what is classified? What do you see in acute eczema? There is intense itching, sudden intense itching, sudden intense eczema, eczema sudden edema, development of papillo vesicles and oozing of the skin. That is the classical characteristic of the acute stage of eczema. Right? What is seen in subacute eczema? Okay, a stage between acute and chronic eczema is called subacute eczema. Okay, which is neither acute nor chronic. What are the classical features? Eredema, but lesser than in the acute stage. Here, the oozing settles down and forms crusting and scaling. So, acute eczema has oozing. Here, the oozing is settled, but it forms crusts and scales. Fissuring is also seen. Itching is not that severe, it is light to moderate, but there is burning and stinging sensation. That is subacute eczema. What is chronic eczema? Chronic eczema is a dry thing, it does not ooze. Okay. When it oozes now, in the chronic eczema, if there is oozing, then we call it acute on chronic eczema. It, chronic eczema has always been there, acute. Yeah, acute infection has come up, but acute uh, flare has come up. So that is acute and chronic. Now we're talking about chronic eczema. That is characterized by dry skin, thick skin, fissured skin, lichenified skin. Okay. Lichenified is a combination of thickening, hyperpigmentation, and accentuated skin markings. That is called Lichenification. So, lichenification. so the chronic eczema is sometimes also called chronic lichenified eczema or lichen simplex chronicus. Right? Let's go ahead. What are the exogenous eczemas? First, the exogenous eczema is the irritant contact dermatitis. Irritant contact dermatitis is a non immunological inflammation in tree reaction to the skin due to an external agent. There, are, there is varied morphology. The clinical types are symptomatic subjective irritant responses, chemical burns, acute irritant contact dermatitis, chronic irritant contact dermatitis, and others. Chronic irritant dermatitis can be caused by water and wet work, sweating and occlusion, household agents like detergents, soaps, shampoos, disinfectants, industrial cleaning agents like solvents and abrasives, alkalis including cements, acids, cutting oils, organic solvents, oxidizing agents like sodium hypochlorite, reducing agents like phenol and aldehydes, certain plants, pesticides, raw food, animal enzymes, and secretions. Desiccant powders like dust and soil and miscellaneous chemicals. What are the persons at risk for chronic irritant dermatitis? Page persons which are in the occupations like housewives, dishwashers, bartenders, hairdressers, medical dental veterinary doctors, food preparation, catering, fishing and, uh, uh, industry, painting and printing, metal work, construction work. <coughs> what is the allergic contact dermatitis? Allergic contact dermatitis results, results from a there is immunity involved in allergic contact dermatitis. So, it is an immunological reaction. It is a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction following contact of the skin with an allergen in a sensitized individual. Okay. It develops within 12 to 14 hours of anti exposure and persists for three to four weeks. 
what is the pathogenesis of energy contact apparatus? First thing is sensitization. Allergen, when it comes in contact with the skin, is taken up by the Langerhans cells and transported by the afferent lymphatics to the draining nerve node. So allergen is taken up by cells. Yes, the antigen is taken to the lymph node and it is presented to naive T cells which then mount a subclinical immune response. Okay. Antigen comes, take, taken up by Langerhans cells, transported by lymphatics to the lymph nodes, where in the lymph nodes, antigen is presented to naive T cells, then an inflammatory response comes up, and then memory T cells and affected T cells migrate to the dermis, where they stay dormant. So that is called lymph node processing. Now the antigen is now in the memory T cells and the response has already been transmitted to the skin. The skin is not sensitized. Then whenever the ad allergen, that allergen, the skin is re-exposed then these affected T cells are activated. Then these T cells produce cytokines and other mediators causing the inflammatory cascade. Right. What happened? First, the antigen came. It, is, it was taken by Langerhans cells, transported by lymphatics to the lymph node, presented to the naive T cells. Naive T cells produce memory T cells and affected T cells. Affected T cells go to the skin, produce a memory T response. The exposure of the antigen again, these affected T cells get activated and release cytokines and other inflammatory mediators. This is the classical CD4 or T cell immunity mediated tonic uh, allergic content apparatus module. What are the clinical features? There could be acute inflammation, there could be chronic inflammation. When in acute inflammation is there, well demarcated patches of edema, edema, vesicles, or bullying. Linear, erosive, or trusted lesions can also be presented. But mind you, there is always a sensitary sensitization prior to these things. In chronic inflammation, wherein the insult is repetitive, there is magnification, scaling, and fissures. For clinical features, they do depend on location, duration of contact with the lesion, and intensity of the inflammatory response. Okay? And the degree of sensitivity of the individual concentration of the in antigen okay how much the person is in is sensitized and how much the antigen is coming and how bad is the inflammatory response produced by the body what are the sources of common allergens in our day-to-day -day life in artificial jewelry or any jewelry for that matter nickel and cobalt are always added in cement and painting business, chromium is added. In leather detergents, potassium dichromate is always there. Leather detergents in plastics. There is phenol and epoxy resins, parthenium or esterophorus or chromium grass, which is in plants. In cosmetics and medications, propylene glycol. In hair dyes, para amine, phenylalanine, amine, diamine or BPD. In topical medications, neomycin or gentamicin can cause. These are the common allergies. Some varieties of allergy dermatitis. Allergy contact dermatitis to hair dye on the left side. Allergy contact dermatitis to the epoxy resins or the sticky agent of the bindi. What is the difference between allergic contact and Irritant contact dermatitis. First and foremost is the allergic is not dose dependent. ICD is dose dependent. Sensitization is required for ACD, not required for ICD. After exposure to the antigen, the response in ICD is immediate, acute, and within minutes to hours. Whereas in allergic contact, the after exposure, there, there are many, many days of normal life, and then after some pre uh, re uh, invasion of the antigen, there could be response. 
what percent of people which are exposed get reactions in allergic almost everybody in icd less way less amount of people what is the involvement of adaptive immunity in icd it is there in icd no any spread to non exposed areas in icd no icd wherever the irritant is touching only that area will be involved remote areas won't be involved. in icd remote areas could also be involved. is get pain and burning it is more in acute more symptomatic and less allergic itching is severe and early in icd and late in acid what is patch test that's the two we to diagnose allergic contact dermatitis for the potential allergen there is a battery of allergens available is applied to the skin usually on the back under occlusion in a non toxic concentration of 40 to 70 hours the substance individual will show localized reaction it is the miniature reproduction of eczema it could be undertaken for patients in whom the inflammation persists even after the avoidance of offending agent and the appropriate topical therapy What are the indications for doing patch testing? Patch testing is done to confirm the diagnosis in suspected cases of contact allergic dermatitis. In eczema with atypical presentation and asymmetrical distribution of lesions, to detect the underlying external allergen in cases of unresponsive eczema. Okay. How would you read and interpret the patch test? First is single plus or query doubtful reaction. There only faint erythema is there. When there is erythema infiltration and possible discrete papules, it is called weak positive reaction, which is non-vesicular. So reading is one. When there is erythema infiltration, papules and vesicles, then it is a strong positive reaction, which is vesicular. The grade two or two plus intense erythema, intense infiltration, and coalescing vesicles. It's an extreme positive reaction or a bullous reaction, which has three grades or three plus. This is how the patch test is done. You can see the two plus reaction to PPD. What is poor dermatitis? It is an eczematous response of skin to sunlight. Typical distribution of the light exposed parts of the skin. There could be three types of reactions to sunlight. It could either be phototoxic, it could either be photoallergic, or it could be eczematous polymorphous light eruptions. What can cause photodermatitis. Systemic topical drugs, chemicals, irritants in combination with UVA spectrum those phototoxic and photoallergic reactions. What is the difference between phototoxic and photoallergic reactions? Phototoxic reactions are quite common. Photoallergic reactions are less common. Phototoxic reactions as an irritant contact dermatitis is non immunological Photoallergy, type four hypersensitivity. In phototoxic reaction, the response is fast in phototoxic reaction. The response is slow or delayed in photoallergic or exposure to UV light. What is the morphology of the lesion in phototoxic? It is sunburn-like. In photoallergic, it is eczema, eczema-like. How do you diagnose phototoxic reaction? Just by looking, see the see the part and, and diagnose. In photoallergic, there is something called a photo patch test. The phototoxic reactions, what uh, drugs or in agents do cause phototoxic reactions, right? Topical are perfumes, hair dyes, oralans, starch, and plants like lime and celery. In systemic Surveillance, systemic surveillance, systemic tetracycline, and systemic phenothiazine. What are photoallergic reactions? 
and what things cause photoallergenic reactions. Perfumes, aftershaves and soaps, papa containing sunscreens, neomycin, halogenated compounds and parthenium gum. Parthenium or pomerous grass. Some NSAIDs, phenothiazine, and thiazides do cause photoallergic reactions also. What is the parthenium induced photoallergic dermatitis or phytophotodermatitis? It is a type of hypersensitive reaction to the plant elevated by sunlight. Normally, seen people who are coming in contact with the pollen grains and other parts of the plant. Parthenium, Hysterophorus, or Congress grass. Often it occurs in farmers and people living in the vicinity of these plants. The third part type is PMLE or polymorphous light reductions. It is classically characterized by intermittent, delayed, and transient reaction to UV exposure. The reaction consists of erythema, uh, uh, erythematous papules, and nodules in the photo exposed areas. How is PMLE managed? General advice for PMLE are is avoidance of sun exposure wherever possible, wear full length dark colored clothes, apply broad spectrum sunscreen regularly. If there is specific treatment, tropical corticosteroids can be given, emollients can be given, in severe cases, oral corticosteroids can be given, hydroxychloroquine sulfate, and other therapy. What is hand eczema? Now, hand eczema is not a single disease. It is due to a summation of many factors. So it's very common in dermatologic practice. It could be endogenous, exogenous, or it's a combination of both. It causes discomfort, embarrassment, interferes with normal daily activities. It is common in the industrial occupation and threatens job security if eczema is not controlled. Women are affected twice as common as men. Which types of hand eczema do we know? Irritant eczema, allergic hand eczema, recurrent focal palm of peeling like eczema, hyperkeratotic palm eczema, fingertip eczema, foam folic or hydrocatotic eczema, or id reaction. What is recurrent focal palm of peeling? It is a chronic, idiopathic, asymptomatic, non inflammatory peeling of the palms. Is commonly seen in summers. It is often associated with sweaty palms and sores. It occasionally may lower the feet. It begins with the occurrence of round scaly lesions, two or three millimeters on the palm and soles, followed by peeling. Lesions result in one or three weeks and require no other therapy other than lubrication. What is fingertip eczema? Yeah. It is the chronic eczema of the palmar surface of the fingertips, which may involve one or many of the fingertips, or all the fingertips can be involved. The skin is dry, cracked, scaly, and may break down into painful and tender fissures of the fingertip. It is very reasonable treatment. Now, what do you tell the patient? Avoid those irritants, use topical steroids, and maintain lubrication of the hands. What is the dyshydrotic eczema or pomphalix? Pomphalix is a chronic relapsing palmoplantar eczema characterized by phonobritic vesicles and bullae. Deep seated symmetrical phonobritic sagolegrain like vesicles, which are preceded by moderate to severe itching. These vesicles do resolve gradually to the and then they lead or they leave behind chronic eczematous changes. Now, pomphalix is the cause is not known, but it is found to be not, not associated with any abnormality of the sweat glands. Classic picture of the pomphalix multiple deep seated sargo grain like vesicles. In general, Instructions to the patients of hand eczema only wear your hands when they are dirty. No frequent washing of hands. When you wash the hands, use, don't use harsh soaps and wash hands with mild synthetic detergents, detergents and use warm water. Avoid direct contact with cleansers and detergents. 
avoid direct contact with or handling anything that causes burning or itching, like wool, wet nappies, peeling of potatoes, handling fresh fruits, vegetables, raw meat. So avoid direct contact with these things. Preferably wear gloves while doing housework or work that involves contacting irritants. Ensure there is frequent use of moisturizers and emollients. What is juvenile plantar dermatosis? Also, it is called atopic winter feet, forefoot dermatitis, sweaty sock dermatitis. It's a characteristic condition seen in pre-pubertal children with atopic diathesis. Clinical features include dry, scaly, glazed. Is symmetrical lesions on the plantar surface of the forefoot. Sometimes presented with painful fissures. Doors up on the feet, interdental spaces, and instep are spared. Okay. How do you manage? Avoid shoes and rubber footwear. Use open toe and leather footwear if possible. Tropical steroids, tetrodemus. Emollients and cozy moisturizers like paraffin. This was all about exogenous eczemas. Let's come to the big topic of endogenous eczemas. The most common, the prototype of endogenous eczema is atopic dermatitis. It is a chronic immune mediated. Proteitic inflammatory skin condition seen in atopic individuals. So, there is an atopic triad wherein atopic dermatitis, asthma, and allergic rhinitis are overlapping with each other. Atopic dermatitis is marked by alternating periods of remission and flare ups. It is a result of complex interplay between environmental, immunological, genetic, and pharmacological factors. It can be aggravated by infections, say psychological stress, seasonal changes, irritants, and allergens. Diagnosis. The topic cannot be precisely defined as it does not have any specific skin changes, any histological features, or direct diagnostic laboratory test. The diagnosis is arrived simply on the basis of some clinical findings, comprising three or more major criteria, three or more minor criteria. These criteria were postulated by Hanifin and Branchka in the 1980s. Major diagnostic criteria of Hannifin and Rajka. First is pruritus, typical morphology and distribution, facial and extensor involvements in infants and children, in adults, flexural lichenification. It is a chronic or relapsing dermatitis where personal or family history of ATOP is there. So these are the major criteria for diagnosis. Atopic dermatitis, minor criteria, neurosis, thiosis, palmar hyperlinearity, or keratosis spinalis, immediate type 1 skin test reactivity, raised serum IgE, adult onset. Uh, early age of onset, tendency towards pathogenic infections, especially develop of esophagus, nervi simplex, or impaired cell mediated immunity. Tendency towards non-specific and or foot dermatitis, chilitis, recurrent, recurrent, yeah. recurrent conjunctivitis, Denny Morgan infravital fold. What are the minor features? Are the minor features keratoconus, bonus, anterior subcapsular cataracts, vital darkening, facial paler or facial edema, 
Age of onset is typically during infancy, two to six months of age, but may start at any age. Clinical features do vary with different phases of life, and the compromise of itching, macular edema, papular vesicle, eczematous areas with crusting, magnification, exfoliation, dryness of the skin, cutaneous reactivity, and secondary infections. Infantile phase, it will be terminated, two months to two years. Sites involved are cheeks, very oral and scalp, extensors of feet and elbow. These lesions are typically oozy. Teething, respiratory infection, emotional upsets, and seasonal changes influence the disease course. The disease course often subsides by 18 months of age, but may progress to the childhood phase. Childhood phase is 2 to 12 years. It characteristically involves elbows and deep lectures, sides of neck, wrists, and ankles. Scratching and chronicity lead to lack edification. Hands may often be involved with exudative lesions, sometimes with nail changes. Secondary bacterial or viral infection may give rise to acute generalized or localized vesiculation. After 12 years, adult phase starts. It commonly involves the flexure, flexure areas. Disease may be diffuse or patchy. It may manifest only as chronic hand eczema. Dermatitis of the upper eyelids and blepharitis can also be seen, but in the adult phase. What triggers it up with the hepatitis? Anxiety, emotional stress. In adults, temperature change and sweating. In children, decreased humidity, excessive washing, irritant contact, allergens, foods, and infections. How do you manage it up with hepatitis? There are multiple lines of therapies first line, second line, third line. Occupational advice, if required, and counseling is very important. First line management of vitamin dermatitis is identifying and controlling the flare factors. Tropical treatments are bathing emollients, humectants, tropical corticosteroids, tropical calcidurine inhibitors like the macrolimus or tacrolimus, ethamol, and tar. Oral therapy. And curative antihistaminics like promethazine, trimeprazine, and hydroxyzine. Antibiotics. And in severe cases, systemic steroids. Second line intensive topical therapy, step up to potent steroids, wet wrap technique, allergy management. Third line treatment is drugs. For phototherapy, oral immunosuppressants like cyclosporine, elephaprine, thymopentine, alpha interferon, and desanitization. That covers etopic hepatitis. Next, endogenous eczema is pityriasis alba. That is a common disorder characterized by asymptomatic, ill defined, hypopigmented, scaly. Like with the patches. It is a low grade eczema which disrupts melanosome transfer from melanocytes to keratinocytes, hence the name and the color alba. Primarily, it is seen in the face of children and adolescents. Infrequently involves lateral aspect of the upper arm and thighs. But 
Tresses alba as such is a minor criteria for atopic dermatitis. Now, hyperpigmentation appears pretty prominently in, you know what, dark skin patients. And during summer, when the skin around it stand, it it stands out against the tan skin. Differential diagnosis of versus alpha. Inflammatory hypopigmentation, genia, policy color, indeterminate leprosy or cancers, and pre So, The management part. How do you manage? Yes, sure. Okay. It is a self limiting condition. The basic or the most important thing which the parents are concerned about is, is it vitiligo? And you should tell them that this hyperpigmentation is not due to vitiligo. Right? To control scaling, we need ingredients. Sunscreens and actively inflamed lesions you need a short course of a topical corticosteroid. It's boric dermatitis. It's a, another troublesome condition. No, no age bars. It is a very common thing. Common chronic inflammatory fabulous gamma disease characteristically involves the areas which are rich in sebaceous gland, glands and a high sebum production rate. Okay. A large body flow are involved. So the lesions which favor the symbolic areas, the areas are scan, ears, retroricular, face, central face classically, eyelashes, uh, eye, eye nose, mustache, beard, central chest, and in intertrigenous areas. The lesions are comprising of erythema, classically greasy skin, and plaques could also be there. Now, there are two forms. Infantile and adult forms. What is the etiology of symbolic dermatitis? Not exactly, so nobody knows, but several factors are being implicated. The most common is a fungus, vitreosum, vitreosporum, ovarium. Now, what does it do? It disturbs the CMI response to Pryosis ovale, which causes this. Now, Pryosis ovale is, Pryosis forum ovale is found increasingly in people with dandruff and affected skin parts. Overactive, so Pryosis forum ovale is one. Overactive sebaceous gland is two, which are producing sebum overactively and the sebum composition is altered. Third causes immunocompetent patients with family history. It may be associated with psoriasis. The, the thing is called sebosoriasis, Parkinson's disease. May be a marker of HIV infection. It is aggravated by emotional stress. In infants, the first one year of life, it affects both sexes equally, but it is commonly seen. Usually, it starts after the first week of birth. It affects the vertex and frontal areas. You see Jews wearing skull caps. So, the vertex and frontal areas, where the, it is called the cradle cap area, Diaper area, face, forehead, eyebrows, eyelids, nasolabial, and temples. Little auricular folds, neck, and axillae can be involved in 
childhood or infantile seborrheic hepatitis. Lesions are comprised of tiny papules covered by yellow, greasy scales, redness in the diaper area and the axillae. Adult seborrheic dermatitis affects hairy areas of mostly men, age of 30 to 60 years. Earliest sign is seen on the scalp. It is later followed by greasy scales and retroauricular fissure. These inflammation and itching are associated with dandruff or tick that happens on the scalp, on the face, there is scaling and erythema from the forehead, medial portion of the eyebrows, eyelids, navel-labial folds, lateral part of the nose, and rhetorical area. On the trunk, papules and baby scales are seen in the metalloid pattern. In the fractional area, there is erythema, greasy scaling, and secondary infection. These are the pictures seen. This is the face, the trunk, and the axilla. <laughs> what are the aims of management of seborrheic dermatitis? First and foremost is loosening and removal of the scales by shampoos and keratolytic agents, inhibiting colonization by the yeast, the triosporum away, detection of the itching and redness and symptomatic relief, educating the patient about the chronic and the recurrent nature of the disease is also an aim of management. What is the management per se? Management is to remove the scales. How to remove it? By medicated shampoos containing antifungals and keratolytic agents. Most commonly use selenium sulfide lotions in the cortisol, cyclopanoxolamine, dark and salicylic acid shampoos. Mild topical steroids or antifungals for lesion of full face and trunk. Short course of systemic steroids or antifungals you will be therapy for recalcitrant disease. That was all about seborrheic dermatitis. Next dermatitis in line is histiotrotic eczema, eczema cracheal, or pintrazy. Eczema associated with a decrease in skin surface lipids. Excessive dryness of the skin precedes the eczema. Elderly patients and atopic patients are more affected. Starts over shins and later spreads to thighs, but similar extremities and trunk. Chickpeas, palms, and soles are typically spared by estetotic eczema. It is common in low humidity. Winter months. Dry and scaly skin, osteoporosis, dry, cracked finger pulps, thin, long, horizontal, and vertical superficial fissures on the legs, or cracked porcelain, or crazy baby pattern, dried removed pattern. Mesoedema, stenosis. Hemorrhagic and purulent fissures do occur in severe cases. This is eczema, acne, or cracked skin. To manage, advise the patient to live in a home, avoid exposure to cold and winds, wear woolen clothing over cottons, from exposed to red wool. Okay. Short baths, no, don't take long baths with lukewarm water. Avoid soaps and detergents. Activations in mornings immediately after bathing and thereafter frequently emollient should be applied to keep the skin moisturized. 
lanolin and paraffin based creams weak topical corticosteroids in urea base increases hydration okay that's all about the steptotic eczema next endogenous eczema is discoid or mumular eczema it is a chronic eczema of unknown cause characterized by coin shaped or disc like lesion with well defined margins the lesions may be annular or ring shaped predominantly that affects the middle aged and elderly persons with dry skin waiting in the winter for winter months it is rare in children it majorly affects the extensive surfaces of the limbs trunk and dorsa of the hands how do you manage frequently use emollients avoid known irritants and allergens topical corticosteroids systemic steroids will require the extensive diseases systemic sedative antihistaminics and broad spectrum and systemic antibiotics in easy lesions what is gravitational eczema venous eczema or stasis eczema it is a common component of the clinical spectrum of chronic venous insufficiency cvi of the lower limbs commonly occurs in person so required to stand for long hours the most common site is the medial aspect of the lower leg chronic inflammation in microangiopathy is associated with chronic venous insufficiency is responsible for the disease also contact sensitization and irritant dermatitis due to stasis ulcer secretion has got to look it may present as an acute or acute or chronic there are associated features of venous hypertension like edema of the legs dilated superficial vein also called varicose vein or purpuras or discoloration due to hemocytosis erosion and ulceration white atrophic telangiectatic scarring white atrophic telangiectic cecia like scarring atrophy blanch elephantiasis nostra or papillomatosis could be seen in chronically congested limbs elevated hemocystein is a feature managing gravitational eczema is managing chronic venous insufficiency and in that get my get this managed okay so chronic venous hypertension management is the main step how is it to be done elevate the leg reduction of weight in obese patients adequate compression bandage or stockings surgeries for venous chronic venous insufficiency sedative antihistaminics topical steroids systemic antibiotics for secondary bacterial infection what is circumscribed neurodermatitis or lichen simplex chronicus it is the result of persistent itching and scratch atopic dermatitis or atopic individuals are more commonly affected in the age group of 30 to 50 It's an adult or old disease. It presents as multiple, intensely periodic, circumscribed, localized, lichenified skin flaps. It involves easily accessible areas where you can scratch, you know, scalp, nape and side of the neck, wrists, extensive aspect of the arms, ankles, upper thighs, perineum, vulva, and scrotum. psychological factors do play a role what is the itch scratch cycle itch then you scratch you scratch then you get more itch 
If you get more rich, you will scratch more. And if you scratch more, you get more rich. That is the rich scratch cycle. Finally, we come to a different entity called Rhygonodilans. It is a chronic condition which is characterized by intensely itchy, small, firm, reddish, papules, and nodules. It is an idiopathic papular or nodular form of lichen simplex chronicus. It commonly affects individuals in the age of 60 years, affects both the sexes equally, and emotional stress is implicated in the causation of regulodilis. Usually involves extensive aspect of the limbs they also occur in the face, trunks and the palms, but commonly limbs. Now the left side shows like a simplex chronicus, the right side shows rigor nodulis. Now what is the management? Uh, like in the chronicus and or regnodularis. The patient should be educated about the role of stress in causing such itching and scratching. So, reduce stress. Counsel the patient to relieve tension and anxiety. High potency corticosteroids under occlusion is required and intralesional steroids for circumscribed chronic lesions. Topical capsaicin, oral doxepin, and sedative antihistamines have been suggested. Topical vitamin D3 in steroid resistant lipo or the vitamin D analogs. To relieve anxiety and depression, psychotic, antipsychotic drugs. Bodies disseminated or stigmatization generalized in reaction. Now, eczema does have a characteristic tendency to spread far from the site of origin. This is called secondary dissemination or auto-exhibitization. Okay. There, the, there could be an associated stasis dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, or other forms of eczema, which could lead to auto-exhibitization. Secondary eczema lesions are small edematous papules the glass or root vesica, papular vesicles symmetrically seen on analogous body sites. The id or autocytic symmetization does subside with the treatment of the primary lesion. But if the primary lesion comes back, this also will come back. This is the mechanism of dissemination in secondary eczema. Contact with an external allergen, ingestion or injection of an allergen, conditioned hyper irritability, bacterial hypersensitivity. What is the treatment of secondary eczema or id or autoexema? Topical corticosteroids and systemic antihistaminics. You could always use a short course of systemic corticosteroid for the id reaction. But mind you, treat the inciting or the first eczema, then treat the secondary eczema. Primary eczema or primary fungal or primary anything to be treated, then secondary dissemination could be prevented. What are the principles of management of general principles in the management of eczema? 
first identify the clinical type of exit. Endogenous, is it exogenous? Is it irritant? Is it allergic? Is it is it similar? Is it astrotic? Okay. Then assess the etiological factors. Is there a vector? Is there some allergen? Is there some irritant? Okay. Evaluate triggering factors and complications. Institute appropriate local and systemic therapy. What are the topical treatments for acute exit? There is oozing. So, Bondi's compressors or wet compressors of normal saline. Calamine lotion for soothing. Subacute eczema, steroid ointment or cream, and zinc oxide paste. For chronic eczema, steroids and protrusion, interlesion steroids, phototherapy, emollients, sunscreens, and the modulators like tacrolimus or metrolimus. Systemic treatments with antibiotics, sedative antihistamines, systemic steroids, systemic tranquilizers, systemic immunosuppressants, and solen UVA phototherapy. That was all about eczemas. Right, so what have we studied in a nutshell? What have we studied? We studied what is eczema? What are the types of eczemas? What are the causes of eczemas? What are the types of endogenous eczemas? What are the types of exogenous eczemas? What is etopic dermatitis? What is hand eczemas? What is estrotic eczemas? What is gravitational eczema? What is photodermatitis? What is allergic contact dermatitis? What is irritant contact dermatitis? Differences between allergic and irritant. irritant. What is photodermatitis? What is phytophotodermatitis? What is airborne contact dermatitis? These all have been seen. So I hope you get a fair idea of eczemas. Just let's, let's go back once to the first page. Table of contents. We see definition. We see classification of eczema. We see latent allergic contact dermatitis. We see patch testing. We saw rhodomatitis in PMLE and eczema. The classical measures eczema of atopic, petrosis alba, fibrotic. Asteroid, nebula, stasis, agosimplex vomitus, granularis, disseminate eczema or aid reaction, how principles of management of eczema. So, I hope everything has been very clear and lucid and you got to understand things. Okay? So, I just thank you all. This is Dr. Akhil Chah, Professor in the Department of Skin and Beauty for Index Medical College, signing off. Thank you.